I have heard your grace refer to our faith as a hidden treasure. Mm. Is orthodoxy today still a hidden treasure? It is still a hidden treasure in the sense that enormous numbers of people still have no idea what orthodoxy really stands for. Orthodoxy tends to mean clergy with beards in strange hats. Enormous numbers of people just have a dim idea of the folklore of orthodoxy, but if it's inner meaning, as life in Christ, they know too little. And we Orthodox don't always help. We are not always very good at sharing our faith with other people. We are too defensive about it. Of course, I'm not advocating a brash proselytism, but we should be much more ready than we are to share. So in that sense, yes, orthodoxy is hidden, but it's not nearly as hidden as it was 20, 30 years ago. And I'm encouraged the developments I see in Western Europe and here in America, but we're still only just at the beginning. I would say all too often in the past, orthodoxy has been not just a hidden treasure, but a sphinx. People ask questions and we don't answer. We just remain silent or we utter riddles. I hope we are becoming less sphinx-like. But the true meaning of the Christian faith, that will always be a hidden treasure to the world. Using the term world in the sense that it's used in St. John's Gospel. We cannot reduce Christianity to a few simple statements which everyone can immediately understand. To understand the truth of Christianity, and for me, the Orthodox faith is the fullness of Christianity. Everyone has to undergo a change of heart. We cannot understand just through words, through sentences. The true understanding has to be through the heart. So there is a sense in which, for large numbers of people, the true Orthodox Christian faith will remain a hidden treasure up to the end. We have to seek and find. We mustn't try to reduce Orthodoxy to a simple, bare minimum. The richness and depth of our fellowship in Christ requires constant discovery right through our lifetime. For every one of us, the fullness of the treasure is still in some measure hidden. Finally, Your Grace, do you have any words for the Orthodox faithful of America since you have traveled here? You're not here very often, and I'm sure many would, would like uh, a few words mm. from you to them. What is deeply important is first that we should read and know Holy Scripture and the Gospels. We should be in that sense Gospel Christians, truly evangelical, knowing the word of Christ in the Gospels. And then next to Scripture, it is supremely important that we should know the lives of the saints, that the saints should be our personal friends. There's such variety in the communion of saints. Let us get to know the saints individually, to value them for the unique distinctiveness found in each one. Those saints who speak perhaps most to our age are the ones who showed humble love and practical compassion. And I hope we may take those as our models. And I'm thinking of people like 
St. John Chrysostom was certainly a fiery preacher denouncing those in power when they went astray, but who showed a living love for the poor. I'm thinking in more recent times of such a figure as St. Seraphim of Sarov in the Russian tradition, or St. Nectarios of Aegina in the Greek tradition, people of humble love. Someone like St. John of Kronstadt, a parish priest completely dedicated to his people with his life centered on the liturgy, caring for the sick and the poor. Or among the people whom I've known personally, the Russian bishop John of San Francisco, St. John Maximovich, who again showed humble love, compassion for others. I think this is the kind of orthodoxy we want, an orthodoxy that is canotic, generous, that doesn't condemn, but bears a peaceful, firm witness in a positive way, an orthodoxy that is committed to serving others, those who are disabled, who are suffering, who are marginalized by society. Those are the people that we Orthodox should be open to and going out to serve. So that's the kind of Orthodoxy in the West that I pray to God we may have.